Ticket resale, also known as ticket scalping or ticket touting, is the act of reselling tickets for admission to events. Tickets are bought from licensed resellers and then sold for a price determined by the individual or company in possession of the ticket. Tickets sold through secondary sources may be sold for less or more than their face value depending on demand, which tends to vary as the event date approaches. When the supply of tickets for a given event available through authorized ticket sellers is depleted, the event is considered sold out, generally increasing the market value for any tickets on offer through secondary sellers. Ticket resale is more common in sporting events and music events or concerts. Ticket resellers use several different means to secure premium and previously sold out ticket inventories, potentially in large quantities for events such as concerts or sporting events. Established resellers may operate within networks of ticket contacts, including season ticket holders, individual ticket resellers, and ticket brokers. They make a business out of getting customers hard to find and previously sold out tickets that are no longer available through the official box office. Ticket scalpers, or ticket touts in British English, work outside events, often showing up with unsold tickets from brokers' offices on a consignment basis or showing up without tickets and buying extra tickets from fans at or below face value on speculative basis, hoping to resell them at a profit. There are many full-time scalpers who are regulars at particular venues and may even have a pool of loyal buyers. One common concern with resale is with scam artists selling fake tickets to unsuspecting buyers. Another common practice is scalpers that uh, sell tickets that have already been scanned at the venue gate since entry is typically allowed only when a ticket is scanned for the first time. Since the tickets were authentic, buyers do not have a way of telling if a ticket has been used or not. A concern when buying tickets on the street from a ticket scalper or via an online auction is that tickets sold by ticket resellers may themselves be stolen or counterfeit. For many major sporting events, counterfeit tickets are auctioned off in the months leading up to the event. The criminals and their activities are not to be confused with legitimate ticket brokers and individuals who abide by the law to legally sell tickets on the secondary market. In 2009, Ticketmaster started adopting paperless restricted ticketing in which tickets could not be resold. Under this system, customers prove their purchase by showing a credit card and ID. The measure was taken in response to ticket scalping and resale markup of tickets on secondary markets and adopted during Miley Cyrus 2009 World Wonder Tour, although Ticketmaster first experimented with ACDC's Black Ice World Tour 2008 to 2010. Ticketmaster has since changed the name of the system to Credit Card Entry. The system requires large groups to enter together with a person who purchased tickets. Some events have ticket transfer, which allows the tickets to change ownership and allow for tickets to be transferred through Ticketmaster's proprietary systems. These cannot be later resold or transferred by other companies such as StubHub. Obtaining tickets through special pre-sales has become more common. These pre-sales often use unique codes specific to an artist's fan club or venue. The advent of pre-sales has allowed more individuals to participate in reselling tickets outside of a broker's office. Although derivatives was a practice in use mostly in the 1980s, some ticket brokers offer tickets even before the tickets are officially available for sale. In such scenarios, those ticket resellers are actually selling forward contracts of those tickets. One example is a company called Ticket Reserve, which is making money by selling options on future sporting events. This is often possible if uh, the reseller is a season ticket holder. Season ticket holders generally receive the same exact seat locations year after year and thus they can enter a contract to deliver on tickets that they own the rights to. Even if those tickets have not been printed or sent out to the original ticket holder. Ticket brokers operate out of offices and use the internet and phone call centers to conduct their business. They are different from scalpers since they offer a customer facing storefront to return to if there is a problem with their transaction. The majority of transactions that occur are via credit card over the phone or internet. Some brokers host their own websites and uh, interact directly with customers. These brokers are able to offer additional services such as hotel accommodation and airfare to events. Other brokers partner with online providers that run independent e-commerce sites. These sites act as portals that allow users to purchase tickets from a large network of brokers. Some brokers offer advice on the best way to buy tickets starting with box office and working with brokers if tickets aren't available through the box office. 
Online ticket brokering is the resale of tickets through a web-based ticket brokering service. Prices on ticket brokering websites are determined by demand, availability and the ticket reseller. Tickets sold through an online ticket brokering service may or may not be authorized by the official reseller. Generally, the majority of trading on ticket brokering websites concerns itself with tickets to live entertainment and events whereby the primary officially licensed seller's supply has been exhausted and the event has been declared sold out. Critics of the industry compare the resale of tickets online to ticket touting, scarping or a variety of other terms for the unofficial sale of tickets directly outside the venue of an event. The late 1990s and 2000s saw the emergence of online ticket brokering as a lucrative business. US corporate ticket reselling firm Ticketmaster developed a strong online presence and made several acquisitions to compete in the secondary ticket markets. Securities analyst Joe Bonner, who tracks Ticketmaster's parent company, New York-based IAC, Interactive Corp, told USA Today, you have to look at the secondary ticket market as something that is real as a threat to Ticketmaster. They missed the boat. StopHub has been around a few years now already. They weren't as proactive as they probably should have been. Ticketmaster launched fan-to-fan -fan secondary ticket reselling on a website called Ticket Exchange in November 2005. Ticketmaster acquired former rivals Get Me In and uh, Tickets Now, while eBay bought StopHub. In 2008, the Boston Red Sox chose Ace Ticket over StopHub to sell their tickets. For popular events with uh, sold-out tickets, resellers may sell the tickets at several times the face value. If resellers buy the tickets and the tickets are not then sold out, then they risk a loss. There may be individuals who wish to attend a popular event and decide to sell their tickets later, and those that buy tickets in large quantities in order to resell their tickets for profit. Some countries have restricted the unauthorized resale of tickets. In 2008, internet ticket fraud had emerged as a global problem when fake ticket websites defrauded millions of dollars from sports fans by selling Beijing Olympics tickets, which uh, they had no intention of delivering. It is controversial whether tickets are goods which can be privately resold. Typically, private resale will contravene the original conditions of sale, but it's legally questionable whether the original conditions of sale are even enforceable. However, most venues declare that they have the right to refuse entry to anyone. Some promoters have ceased selling tickets in the traditional first-come, first-served manner and require prospective ticket holders to enter a ballot, a competition with random winners, with the prize being the opportunity to purchase a small number of tickets. The ballots are intended to discourage reselling tickets by making it harder to purchase large numbers of tickets because being at the front of the queue does not guarantee the holder a ticket. Events that have sold tickets by ballot include The Big Day Out in 2007 and Led Zeppelin at the O2 Arena in 2007, as well as the 2006 Commonwealth Games. A similar practice used among ticket resellers is to list an item as an online auction, such as on eBay, most commonly an innocuous item such as a collector's card and give the tickets as a bonus to the winner, thereby not actually selling the tickets in order to circumvent ticket laws. This does not actually get around eBay selling rules as they effectively state the goods that the buyer receives are what the seller is selling, including any free bonuses. Ticketmaster sells tickets in online auctions, which may bring the sale price of tickets closer to market prices. The New York Times reported that this could help the agency determine demand for a given event and more effectively compete with ticket resellers. Online auction sites like eBay only enforce state ticketing laws if either the buyer and or seller resides in the state where the event is taking place. Otherwise, there is no resale limit for tickets. Glastonbury Festival, which sold out 137,500 tickets within less than two hours in 2007, introduced the system in the same year, whereby tickets included the photographic ID of the original buyer to enforce non-exchangeability. For tapings of uh, Comedy Central's The Daily Show and The Corbett Report, tickets were free. However, identification of ticket holders is checked when entering and while standing in line, and most notably when progressing from the entrance queue into the studio space. These measures serve effectively as a means of preventing those reserving these uh, sought-after tickets from selling them for cash value upon reservation.